Let me start with a question. What's the one thing in your daily life that you just can't live without? Think about that one must have. Some people go straight to their creature comforts, like their morning cup of coffee, or their cell phone. I can tell you what my daughters would say, ice cream. <laughs> I'm curious, by a show of hands, how many of you thought, oh, I can't live without my spouse? <laughs> One hand, maybe. And that's okay unless your spouse is sitting next to you. I'm pretty sure that very few of you, if any at all, thought, oh, the one thing I can't live without is electricity. Electricity, you know, the thing that made your alarm clock go beep, gives cold water heat, makes your hair dry and neat. <laughs> the reason your bread is toasted, coffee brewed, eggs cooked, and meat stewed. Electricity keeps traffic going, ATMs flowing, the economy growing. It's one thing we can't live without, but don't spend a second thinking about until <laughs> the lights go out, and then we pout. As long as things work when we plug it in, flip a switch, or we're happy. <laughs> like clean air and clean water, we take electricity for granted. For me, that changed three years ago when I took a job at a company that operates the power grid. Now I have a whole new appreciation for what it takes to turn on a light. Here's what I'm learning. The electric industry is undergoing a game-changing transformation, one that involves a clean energy future, a smarter digital grid, and active participation from you and me. You see, ever since Edison, the business model has been the same. Utilities generate power and deliver it to the people. It's always been a one-way system, power to the people. But thanks to innovation, emerging technology, and scale, that's changing. An electric industry revolution is underway. A two-way system is developing where we continue to see power being delivered to the people, but we're starting to see power coming from the people. Here's my big idea. We're rapidly moving to a future where you and I, power consumers, will also be power providers. It's exciting, it's happening now, and we all need to be aware of this massive transformation. Before we talk about that future, let me describe the present. The tricky thing about electricity is it has to be generated in real time. The power needed to power my microphone, light these lights, amplify these speakers, it was generated just moments ago. Someone has to make sure the right amount of electricity is generated minute by minute. Not 10 miles away from here is a control center that does just that. It's operated by a company called MISO, the Mid-Continent Independent System Operator. That's where I work, MISO, not MISO. Two very different things. <laughs> At MISO, we ensure the right amount of electricity is generated and transmitted to the utilities, who then distribute it to homes, schools, and businesses. We keep the power flowing and the lights on every day for 42 million Americans. Our control rooms look like something you'd expect to see at NASA. At our main center, nine-foot-tall glass panels stretch half a football field long. 56 rare screen projectors display real-time grid information. Our operators are there 24-7, 365. Now, MISO operates the power grid from coast to coast, longitudinally speaking, from the coast of the Great Lakes down to the Gulf Shore coast. Our region touches 15 states and includes the Canadian province of Manitoba. Within our region, MISO manages 66,000 miles of high-voltage transmission line. 
enough wire to wrap around the Earth more than two and a half times. The size of our region is so big that wind power generated in Minnesota can be used by a homeowner in Mississippi. Now, I mentioned that power has to be generated in real time. To make sure that happens, every five minutes, one of our operators hits a button that sends a signal out to the generators to let them know whether they should increase power, decrease power, or stay the same. Every five minutes. How do you like that job? That's what's happening now. Let's talk about the future, this revolution that's happening. For you and me, it starts with awareness, which leads to participation, which results in change. Awareness is a powerful thing, and technology is making us aware of the most mundane things. The funny thing is, we love it. How many people know how many steps they've taken today? Right? Technology's made us step crazy. I once got into a one-day step challenge with a close friend. At least, we started the day off as friends. <laughs> we both really wanted to beat each other, and we came up with two very different strategies. I spent the day hiking around outside, and at night, I paced around my house until midnight, racking up steps. <laughs> she attached her Fitbit to her dog's collar, <laughs> and let her dog run around all day. I logged 45,000 steps that day and barely beat Blue the dog. <laughs> Personal tracking devices, by making us aware of our steps, they kind of motivate us to participate in more exercise, and they get us thinking about changing the way we think about living a healthy, active lifestyle. Awareness, participation, change. Technology in the automobile industry is doing the same thing, making us change our driving habits through awareness and par participation. In my car, a green light comes on around the speedometer, letting me know when I'm driving efficiently. By paying attention over time, I've changed my driving habits, and as a result, I get better gas mileage. Awareness, participation, change. Now, you may not know this, but there's an awareness campaign going on right now in the electric industry. Utilities and private companies want you to know how much electricity you're using. It's part of this electric industry revolution, and it's happening at our homes. Last year, I went out and I bought a Nest thermostat because I thought it was cool, and it is. Nest knows when I'm home and when I'm away, and it adjusts the temperature accordingly. At the end of each month, I get an email letting me know how much electricity I used and how much electricity I used compared to other Nest owners. It makes me think about, makes me aware of my energy consumption, and I think about ways to save. Utilities are doing something similar by installing digital smart meters at your homes and your businesses. This technology makes you aware of your consumption by sending you data in real time. It helps you manage your electricity use on time. And this technology allows you to participate in energy management programs. So you can actually help reduce stress on the grid, lower overall energy costs, and as a result, save you money. That's participation. Now let's talk about change. And that involves renewable energy sources and scale. Let's take the electric vehicle as an example. A friend once let me drive her brand new Tesla SUV. It is an amazing electric vehicle. It was so new, in fact, that her husband had not even driven it yet. <laughs> but she owed me a few months prior, I had beaten her and her dog in a one-day step <laughs> challenge. <laughs> if you own an electric car, good for you. But when tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people own an electric vehicle, we're not talking about cars and trucks anymore. We're talking about a giant energy storage system 
a giant battery that utilities will be able to tap into, with permission from the car owner, and draw electricity back into the grid when it's needed. Researchers are now developing what they call vehicle grid integration, where the cars can pull electricity from the grid and push electricity back into the grid. It's happening. It's power coming from the people. That relationship between the utility and the customer, the consumer, it's critical, and we're already seeing it when it comes to the solar industry. Technology is putting solar panels on rooftops, hilltops, businesses, and bridges. One house with solar panels? Great. Scale up, add solar panels to hundreds of thousands of homes, millions of homes. Now what we've created is a giant power pool, one that will be generating excess electricity that utilities are already tapping into and using that electricity when there's a need. The homeowners and the business owners receive a credit for that power. Again, it's power coming from the people. We can take this one step further, and this is a real game changer, according to industry experts. Battery storage. Up until recently, the technology wasn't there for homeowners, business owners, or utilities to store large amounts of electricity cheaply, reliably, and safely. That's changed. Batteries mean that the extra electricity we're generating at our homes and businesses can be stored for our use at a later time or pumped back into the grid for the utilities to use. Again, we'll receive a credit for that. It truly is power coming from the people. All of this talk about battery storage, electric cars, solar power, it's not fantasy, make-believe stuff. It's real. It's happening. So let me leave you with this. Thanks to technology, innovation, scale, homeowners and business owners, even towns and cities, can generate their own electricity, can share electricity, and will soon be able to store electricity. This is an electric industry revolution. And guess what? You and I are driving this change. So I encourage you, be aware. Participate in energy management programs and embrace this future where you're not just a power consumer. You can be and will be a power provider. Thank you.